Five Different Types of Imposter Syndrome In this presentation, I will be showing you a few fine details of imposter syndrome that you might not know about. Imposter syndrome is a complex affliction with a wide variety of ways that it can be expressed. It is not officially recognized by the Diagnostic Service Manual of Mental Diseases, but it has been studied extensively by psychological researchers. So let's take a look at the five different types of imposter syndrome. 1. The Gifted Kid This is an expression of imposter syndrome usually found in young adults. As many people born in the 90s can attest, there was a tendency in public schools to esteem certain children who scored high on standardized tests. They would be placed in gifted programs, be given extra responsibilities, and so on. The real world does not have gifted programs, however. Going from being recognized as the smartest of the smart in high school and perhaps even college to merely being another worker bee in a hive of worker bees, many gifted kids will feel that they actually aren't qualified to do anything. They grew accustomed to a certain pattern. Validation means they're doing well. No validation means they're doing poorly. And since the world outside of high school does not validate good work with anything more than a paycheck, it can be hard for these former gifted kids to feel like they belong anywhere. 2. The Lone Wolf This sufferer of imposter syndrome is likely a product of a toxic environment. For one reason or another, they got the impression that asking for help, or receiving help without asking for it, is somehow dishonest. The result is a person that has trouble feeling comfortable in groups, even if they work well in the group. The defining trait of this type of imposter syndrome is not external antisocial behavior, but rather an internal discomfort with collaboration. 3. The Overachiever this is perhaps the most common way imposter syndrome expresses itself. This form of the affliction has the sufferer trying to do more than everyone else, staying late for work, taking on too many projects, anything they can do to show the world that they are the hard worker they want to be. This issue is that while they are in reality pushing their body and time to its limits, they believe that they are behaving normally. They cannot imagine doing anything less than what they are doing. When your identity is so inexorably tied to your work, as the overachievers is, not working is tantamount to not existing. 4. The Perfectionist Perfectionism is the sister syndrome of imposter syndrome. This expression of imposter syndrome is a result of a person feeling inadequate if they present themselves as anything less than perfect. It's not enough for them to be the best. They must be infallible. The core issue here is obviously that no one is infallible. Perfectionists usually come from environments where any flaw is seen as unacceptable. But in healthy environments, trying to seem perfect will do a lot more to undermine your credibility than any amount of vulnerability. 5. The Know-It-All this version of imposter syndrome garners the least sympathy, but it is an affliction all the same, and they who suffer it are suffering all the same. The know-it-all gauges their worth based on how much they can know. This includes how much they can correct others, interject in conversations, and in general flaunt their knowledge. The know-it-all will find it hard for themselves to approach or talk to anyone as saying things like, I don't know, will make them feel like they are opening themselves up to attack and discreditation. In the end, imposter syndrome is a product of the sufferer's environment. They are never just a jerk that needs to be put down, but a person that needs to be helped. So whether you are suffering from one of these yourself or know someone who is, be patient with them. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.